Our next panel is going to talk about the next generation of women in PR, how women are breaking the barriers and building professionals uh, upholding the core value of ethical leadership and building the influence. Ladies and gentlemen, here we have with us on the panel, Prasiddha Menon, Regional Communication Lead, Airbnb, Bhavya Sharma, Associate Director, PR and Comms, Urban Company, Gunjan Mukherjee, Lead Corporate and Brand, Hill and Knowlton Strategies. We also have Pooja Trihan, Associate Vice President, Communication, Sugarbox. And moderating the session once again is Ruchika Jha from Exchange for Media. A very warm welcome to all of you. Request all our panelists to please switch on your cameras and mics. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me here. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. And hi, co panelists. Very nice to meet you all. Good hi. afternoon, everybody. So, Ruchika, over to you. Thank you, Khyati. A very good afternoon to all the panelists. Uh, so starting us uh, starting with a session, uh, my first question is that what are some of the key challenges and opportunities today's women leaders face? Starting with Ms. Sharma, please. Hi, Ruchika. Hi, everyone. It's a very heavy question you're starting this session with, Ruchika. Um, Cool. So key challenges and opportunities that today's women leaders face, right? I'll actually go with opportunities, to be honest. Um, I think there are a lot of opportunities that exist. But what's holding women back is uh, their self-doubt and imposter syndrome, to be honest. The moment we get over it, we, I mean, we'll be able to uh, navigate the paths better. Right? We're extremely hard on ourselves, unnecessarily, unrightfully. And uh, it's more, it's, it's essentially driven, not exactly as an institutional problem, but it's also it's kind of culmination of societal institution and our own uh, discomfort with ourselves. The moment we are able to balance that, I think uh, it won't be a problem for us to move into leadership to capitalize on the opportunities that present us present to us. Uh, the challenge there are two challenges that I will do. I will point out. One is uh, that we take criticism too personally. Um, and it can be just from anybody around us. You know, we don't even put in that filter that is this person's criticism important or is this person even important to make that comment about us. We don't. The more, we need to put in those filters whose criticism or feedback is important to be sought or reflected upon. Um, the other is uh, at times we uh, we don't find the right mentors for ourselves, and it kind of stems from the fact that we're not using those filters properly. If you're taking in everyone's advice or whatever criticism that's coming in, but you're not able to uh, distinguish who is important and therefore who should be a mentor and who shouldn't. So those will be my two, two bits on this question. Ms. Menon, what would you like to say about the opportunities and the challenges? Thank, thank you, uh, Ruchita. I think thank you, E4M team, for making us a part of this panel. Um, to begin with, I completely agree with Bhavya. I think... Um, there are a lot of opportunities. I think um, one, if we look at it from an individual's perspective, I think Bhavya is absolutely right. I think we are very hard on ourselves. Um, we are sometimes restricting ourselves from being a strong voice in the room because we are sometimes not the loudest voice. Um, we sometimes get you know, uh, into situations where boys clubs take over and somewhere you know, we take a step back. And I feel like the moment we are a lot more confident about ourselves uh, and we're able to go ahead and you know vouch for things that we really feel we deserve and work hard towards it too of course that applies across genders uh, I think situation will really change for us at an individual level um, it's okay to be great at multitasking but it's okay to not multitask too I think those pressures are things that we put on ourselves so if we decide one day that okay we're just going to you know focus on work today we're going to order in food that's fine uh, but I feel like sometimes we are, it's maybe the mindset and the way, you know, uh, we, sometimes also there's a little bit of how we are brought up. Like there's this expectation that, oh, you've chosen to work. In that case, you need to do a great job at being a homemaker. To one, you have to do a perfect job and you have to be amazing at multitasking and only that. So I feel like we take a lot of these pressures too, um, too much into consideration whenever we look at opportunities. Uh, so I think that's one thing which we should definitely work towards. Externally, if we look at the environment, I feel things have changed now. 
um, whether it is, you know, the downfall of a lot of companies that happened because of situations like harassment that women faced or the lack of diversity, uh, or is it because of movements like Me Too? I feel like companies have become a lot more um, aware of the fact that they need to inculcate an inclusive culture. Uh, it has to be in the DNA of the company. You need to work towards helping leaders, women leaders, uh, progress, give them the right kind of opportunities. Uh, and of course, uh, all of this with the belief that you're deserving of it. You, you're hardworking and you've kind of proved yourself. Um, so I think that way situation is changing. So these, I feel, are like big ticket opportunities. Um, and I feel like if we are, as women leaders, able to work around this, um, they, the future definitely seems bright. Uh, having said that, if you look at the, I think it was the 2021 Fortune 500 study, and you know, um, it spoke about how out of the Fortune 500 companies, there were about 41 companies or women leaders kind of dominating, and that's still 8.1%. Uh, so I think, you know, the change has begun. Uh, the environment is getting slightly more conducive for us. Um, but yeah, I think it totally depends on us on how we as leaders kind of take on that challenge and fight for it. Um, and not feel in any way, um, you know, uncomfortable doing it. Uh, so, so I think that's the one thing I, I feel like I've learned from men. I mean, they do their thing. They don't care. <laughs> so I think we should do our thing and not really care about whether we be branded as emotional or aggressive or too ambitious or whatever else. Just do your thing. Yeah, that's that's what. Thank you, Miss Menon, for your kind words. Uh, Miss Trehan, what are your remarks on the same? Wow, Kavya and uh, Prasada have like, put the context right bang on, and I'm sure Gunjan has some really interesting perspectives. Uh, thanks, Ruchika, once again, for uh, actually daring to get all four of us on one panel. And I'm, I'm sure you're scared in the back, and we don't know where we are going to land up. But don't worry, we're not going to worry you. Um, this is something that I often say to everyone. Uh, respect or likability, aggressive or assertive, pushy to get the work done or tact. Why are these words surprisingly always thrown towards women leaders? Why? And I don't know. And why do we even get down to explaining that to them? You know, I mean, it just, can we not evaluate any individual men or women basis how professional they are towards their goal and deliverables and how ethically they're doing it? I mean, if you're not really breaking any laws and, you know, doing all of this the way it needs to do at the end of the day and achieve the goals that business wants, then why are individuals bucketed like this? This is part one. Part two, we need to normalize the whole concept amongst our peers, our colleagues, our leadership, that uh, women are going to go up the ladder. Okay, we don't really want to play the role of, you know, managing everything back home, managing expectations, managing people, friends, family, running into a corporate life, grooming a team because we're expected to do that as leaders. Then why are we not normalizing the concept? I'm, women are going to move up the ladder. And why I bring this up is because the minute women move up the ladder, the whole universe, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, is waiting with bated breath to figure out where have we faulted? What's the gap? Why didn't we deliver? How do we put this person down? Why do we even want to do that? So this actually, I mean, there is truckloads of responsibilities the minute any individual gets into a leadership position. So imagine the amount of stuff, you know, you need to really swim through any problems, any issues, good things, bad things, any opportunity that comes your way, you need to swim through a lot of it. And actually, I mean, there are days when I tell people, can I just, you know, loan the brain somewhere and just take a leave and go to the Himalayas, you know, because it just gets easier. But that's the easiest solution out. So I'm saying uh, women are expected to be empathetic and patient. They're not, they're expected to deliver, but they're not allowed to be aggressive. They're expected to run behind the opportunities, but then they're not allowed to even, you know, think about it aloud or we need to work. I mean, imagine all four of us or five of us today on the panel are discussing why can't people just normalize these things? So, I mean, yeah, so just do your thing the way Prasiddha said. I feel whatever be it, uh, life is going to throw all these googlies at us. So stay at it, continue doing it. 
if all of us have managed to reach here, there are many more who can do that as well. And there are many before us who paved the path because that's how our inspiration was also, you know, I mean, ignited. So I think opportunities are equally available, men or women. We need to normalize all these pieces that kind of trouble us or affect us and just keep doing our piece. Ms. Mukherjee. What are your points on this? Oh, I think, um, you know, thank you for having me on this panel and hearing from uh, the women leaders in the panel. Uh, I, I think you've touched upon all the key uh, things that are actually going on in our head every day in, day out. Uh, you know, something uh, that I would want to pick up that Bhavya mentioned. You know, I feel the industry is gradually shifting towards more of a mentorship driven approach for women. And I think that is helping us a lot. We are leading in different ways and we are increasingly moving towards that path of leadership. I also thought, you know, that in the last two years, uh, what has emerged is that everyone needs to be on board to achieve a strong future. So, uh, you know, achieving a change, particularly in the turbulent times like ours, requires the characteristics aligned with an entrepreneurial leader. And I think that is the biggest opportunity for women leaders today. You know, empathy, collaborative spirit, diversity of thought are what we are bringing to the table right now, which have become all the more important. Uh, and, you know, the last thing that I would like to kind of say is I have always, uh, you know, realized this that in comparison to men, you know, women view work more holistically. You know, it's like a component of our overall life plan. Therefore, we are more likely to approach our careers in a very self reflective way. And we value factors such as meaning, purpose, connection with co-workers and work-life inter integration. And as uh, Prasada mentioned, you know, I think I would just conclude by saying that women should just embrace their natural leadership styles because that's what we've, we've been brought up to kind of lead. That was a very, and very good and insightful start to the session. And moving on to my next question is that, what in your views are some of the key insights that has resonated and triggered bigger and broader change? And I'll, I'd like to repeat myself here, change implies the change about women moving on, uh, being and moving on in the PR industry and, in, and the, a change in their mindset that more number of women leaders can aim for the leadership position. Ms. Sharma, I would like to start with you. Thanks, Ruchika. You know, when we started with the panel and when you mentioned that uh, all the questions will be started with me first, I was actually a little worried because these are all very heavy duty questions you lined up. Uh, but uh, given how powerful the panel is, I'm kind of glad I'm putting in this answering first because by the time we come to the end, I think a lot of points are going to get covered. Sorry, Gunjit, but if you want to swap places, more than happy to do that. Um, but coming back to the question, right? Um, I won't restrict the answer to the PI industry. I think uh, women leadership uh, goes much beyond just PR and uh, should yes. definitely go beyond PR. Yes. Uh, but um, going from the previous answers and what uh, all of us were saying earlier, I think confidence is the biggest driving factor, right? It's the biggest trigger. Confidence in yourself, in the room you are in, and your team. All three of these factors play a big, big role. And when I say confidence, I'm not just saying acting smart, right? I'm saying uh, competence and actual experience. Those are the two ingredients that uh, make, you, make you become confident. Uh, what are your actual skill sets? What is the competence that you have? And what is the experience overall that you've gained over the years? That And the moment you have those two nailed that confidence should exude. You should be able to be the voice in the room that actually uh, gives direction and isn't a passive listener and taking direction or taking notes. I think women need to step beyond taking notes and actually start talking more and uh, you know, like pound, maybe not pound the fist on the table, but that voice needs to be a lot more powerful, equally powerful. Um, the other piece that I just wanted to uh, you know mention over here, taking from Pooja's point uh, in the previous question, um, I think when men are aggressive, they're actually seen as assertive, whereas when women are being uh, assertive, they're seen as aggressive. I think the other, I mean, with, to this, unfortunately, men and men, male leaders end up being seen, gaining respect out of this behavior as women get, uh, you know, like tagged uh, incorrectly. But I think women should realize their own superpowers. And uh, in my experience, women's superpowers have been always empathy and coaching. Uh, and if given the current environment that we are in, both of these will 
take us leagues ahead, right? The last two years have taken a toll on everyone's mental health. We are a lot more into teaming. We are working more uh, remotely, which means that it, conversation need to be not just work related. They have to transcend beyond work. They kind of them because the office is now coming to your home, so the conversation also kind in a way ties in with the home and the work together. And uh, that's where men kind of miserably fail, and women have women go and take the uh, leap ahead. And that's something that uh, women leaders should definitely, uh, you know, keep in their arsenal. It's also something that uh, Google's recent project, Project Aristotle, found out in their study. I mean, in the that teams value psychological safety and dependability more than the people who are in the team. And these are two qualities that women definitely bring to the table, and they should ace them. Ms. Menon, what would you like to add to this? Yeah, I think totally agree with Bhavya. And at the cost of sounding a little too immodest and direct, um, I feel the credit completely, completely goes to the women leaders who've made it. Um, I don't think there's a broader machinery that is working towards enabling us and you know creating opportunities for us. And none of that. I'm sure if we have got some sort of coaching support, that's because we've made the effort to go ahead and seek help. Um, if we've had the ability to put up our hand and say that, okay, I think I'm ready for this role, that's because we've been confident and we feel good about where we stand and we've worked really hard, probably harder than a lot of other people out there, men and women who've probably not reached that spot um, and kind of claim that position, which was rightfully ours. Um, so, so I feel like that change happened because at one point, I think a lot of uh, us came and trusted our own abilities um, and, and took the leap of faith and uh, landed where, where we deserved to be. And then uh, I think the second part comes where it's our responsibility now to encourage the generations to follow, to have that same uh, confidence and kind of give them that, uh, you know, somewhere it's all sometimes it's just like one conversation where you were able to encourage someone and say hey you're so good like you should try this um and I feel like I I am very blessed because you know I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of women leaders um whether from PR or not but uh who've kind of come and shared their journeys which have been so inspiring that you feel like oh why can't I do it um and sometimes I want to give a little bit of credit to some of the main leaders as well that I've worked with uh, who've kind of encouraged you to chase your dreams and you know break the glass ceiling, have confidence, um, and and kind of have that voice. Um, I do want to point out that I think you know at least at least for me in the beginning there were times you know where you don't feel comfortable getting into a conversation. I work with people across cultures. <clears throat> Sometimes you know you kind of wait for your turn, and then you realize that the meeting is over. The turn never came. Nobody really called out your name and said, "Hey, Tasida, what do you think?" They didn't do it. Um, so I feel like it, it has taken a couple of such situations to tell yourself that if you keep doing this, you're the one who's losing um, and that, you know, you have to take control. And I feel like that's what is going to happen. I don't think the machinery is going to ever enable any one individual or a community and say, OK, you know, they deserve it. It's not happened. I and mean, there's so many issues that we deal with at a social level. So I feel like it's totally on you. And I, I I keep saying this to people I work with that, you know, if you believe in yourself, the world's going to start seeing uh, your abilities and then, you know, everything's going to kind of work towards you. And at the same time, you will face a ton of challenges, just be prepared to deal with it. Um, and that's, that to my mind is going to still be the reality for some time. Ms. Trehan, what, what are your remarks? Um, before I answer that question, Rutika, I have to say, I think all of us are doing something right. Because, you know, the thought that I had in mind to start my response to this question with, Sasada actually said it, the change begins with us. So I was really, I was like, where are my pom-poms? I want to jump around and say that all of us are doing something correct. Because in all honesty, boring statements, but the change begins with you. And one step at a time. Okay, as a woman professional, we need to stop doubting ourselves. We need to blatantly and shamelessly believe that we are intelligent. We bring a lot of value and talent to the table. Don't wait for that opportunity to come your way. You need to go out and tell them that, listen, have you noticed that I've done this? I mean, why are we so good at building brands, building leaders, building these organizations, and we don't even manage to uh, shout from the top of the mountain that this is what I did. This is what I created. 
I'm sorry, there might be a lot of people who would have met me on my path and would have felt upset about the fact that I went out and told everybody that this is what the communications team did. But this is important. Why would we put in those hours and then shy away from taking credit to do that? No one else in the field, any organization, any, any industry today, no one wants to do that. So that's one thing. Stop doubting yourself. Stop saying sorry. Please stop saying sorry. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to take a leave. It's okay to tell your team members and other colleagues they've not delivered and this has to be done. It's okay to be that. Doesn't matter. Please don't get attached to any words, any feelings, any, any, any statements that people throw at you. At the end of the day, if you're a professional and you've come to work, you will be noticed and remembered by what you've created at work. So your inspiration lies with you. Change needs to begin with us. Very well said, Prasadha. There is no external machinery. This is, this is actually the truth, the naked truth, literally. There's no one sitting there to help you. But the minute you get up and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to say sorry. This is what we are going to do. I'm a professional and I want to grow here. I'm going to be focused and I'm going to be moving in that direction. You want to walk along? Great. Don't want to walk along? Don't do it. But what also helped me in all of this is stay focused. Just, just keep walking one step at a time, one day at a time. Build your own tribe wherever you go. Professionally, whether for your morning runs or your coffee breaks or office, build your own tribe. Be with people who understand and celebrate other human beings. We need to stop the spider behavior of pulling everyone down all the time. You know, I mean, um, it's, it's, a, it's a very funny statement that people often say women don't get along. I'm sorry. I have the best of uh, women professionals who are like you know i mean we are crazy buddies together uh, they've been actually great mentors so it's, it's both genders who've helped you they will only help you if you show that curiosity to learn and that will to grow come what may everyone everyone has a tough life you need to swim through it get up and say i'm going to fight it out personally or professionally and that's the only way i mean what got us still here is not going to take us ahead so you need to keep changing that approach that's what we need to gear up for. Thank you, Mr. Han. Ms. Mukherjee, uh, what in your views are some of the key insights? So, you know, I love you to hear all of you. I mean, uh, change begins with us. I mean, such a strong thing uh, that, you know, uh, Pooja kind of mentioned and taking cue from that, you know, uh, from my personal experience, one of the most striking things that I have noticed in my uh, career in my journey is how women leaders are celebrating other women leaders. I mean, look at what we're doing right now, right? You know, there are certain women leaders who are encouraging women to be more vocal in sharing their experiences, opinions, their achievements. And I think that can go a long way in smoothening our journey towards becoming integral members of the C-suite management. You know, something that I have also tried to build and I have seen my, you know, mentors kind of do is creating a very close-knit group of people who treat one another like family. I think that's incredibly powerful, especially when you look at everything happening in the world. You know, flexibility at workplace, remote working, relationships that we have strengthened speaks a lot about the broader change that we ourselves as women leaders have kind of introduced in this journey. So yes, I mean, I, I to uh, Prasada, Pooja, and Bhavya, absolutely agree to everything that uh, we've kind of uh, tried to establish. Uh, coming to our third question is that how uh, the leaders should build con uh, confidence to the young professionals, especially women professionals, through the behavior behavioral change and what are the roles that the institution plays in empowering them? Ms. Sharma? Yeah, Ruchika, I'm getting started. <laughs> Would anyone else want to go first? Pretty okay yeah, taking a you, uh, Miss Menon, Miss Trehan, if you would like to go first. Actually, we should put Gunjan right up there. Let's okay. reverse it. <laughs> we'll start with the answer. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to kind of answer this question more from an organization standpoint. You know, we need to move from empowerment to sponsorship. You know, organizations need to identify high potential women and then work with them to create an ecosystem where they can perform their best and be future women leaders. And this goes beyond, uh, you know, just gender representation of numbers and few policies in place to ensure growth and opportunities. You know, let's consider a very simple and effective example. You know, government of India has mandated that for working mothers, 
work from home options need to be provided for much more beyond maternity leaves unless job requires physically to be in place. Same for late nights, same for night shifts. You know, government has also made uh, daycares, et cetera, being accommodated by organizations. So we can see a shift towards creating a more enabling system because the realities of everyday life for us cannot change. Those who have to be, you know, what, what companies need to do is they need to kind of identify these changes in this environment and, inst and apply them because instead of losing high potential ta talent to such challenges, what will result is you will see a talent crunch, crunch and imbalance. So it's very important for us to understand what is happening in the overall industry and similarly kind of adapt, evolve and work along with women leaders to bring about that change. Otherwise, nothing will change. Ms. Trihan, what would, you, uh, would you, what would you like to add to this? Um, so I would read a lot of uh, news articles often, you know, saying that uh, women in technology sector per se are very few and, you know, not many numbers, not growing or not in the senior leadership positions. Um, and I actually saw that when I joined uh, Sugarbox Network that we have, in, I mean, great talent, but maybe they're at junior level, mid-level, things like that. Um, I started this campaign. It's one of the campaigns that's very close to my heart amongst all the other pieces that we do, but there's something called as women in tech. We actually started with women in our organization beyond marketing and communication. I started with people who were possibly in engineering, in infrastructure, in operations. We got them in front of the uh, screen frame. Uh, I mean, they're all behind the camera talent. They don't really you know, get an opportunity in their life to do that. We got them there and all that we told them is just talk to us about your journey. Just tell people why do you love the tech industry? Why are you here? And I, I mean, I, I, if anyone can just go, go onto our LinkedIn page, view it, you'll be surprised to see that all of these women turned around and they are so kicked about technology. It's literally their high. Some of them actually told me that, listen, we saw our dad playing around with gadgets. And that's when I decided I want to be in this. Uh, industry. I want to be part of this domain. And uh, it's surprising women never talk about that. I mean, they actually will sit down and tell me, listen, this is the gadget. This is how it works. I mean, I'm learning each and every day. You feel we're all leaders here. Please come and sit with these engineering girls. And I'm like, uh, I, I really don't know anything today. The feeling is more of a fool than anything else. But that's what it is. So women in tech as a category, my organization didn't ask me to do it. I felt that need. I wanted to talk about it. They said, um, no one said no or yes to it. I said, okay, let me just do this campaign, minimal budget, see the turnaround. If nothing else externally, I've actually got the women uh, tech and you know engineering and the other professionals in our organization excited about it. Who's coming on next? Who's going to be talking about it? Now, that's how you build someone else's confidence. That's how you give back to your organization, your peers, not necessarily in the whole industry. Just help everyone get up and do that. The, the minute I did that and the minute the change was evident, the organization automatically empowered me to continue doing that. So that's what I meant, you know, we need to walk that step show that change to everybody, whether they agree or not, just keep doing it. It took me four or five uh, episodes to be shot before everybody got aligned to the whole piece. So at the end of the day, uh, just do your bit. We know how to build a brand. What's the storytelling? What's the narrative? We'll turn everything around, but celebrate yourself, celebrate people around. Um, I mean, just like a closing thought for that answer, I'm, part of the executive leadership the day one when I got there I'm like oh part of the big boys club and that's where I stopped myself I said no that's incorrect part of a larger opportunity where I can possibly learn more and then help others to get onto that platform I'm still learning tech I'm still learning data I mean as communication professionals I don't know why we don't tell our trainees and interns please deep dive into data why are we dragged into a uh, senior or a mid-level position and then we, you know, taking data? There's lots to do in data beyond the measurements that all of us love to talk about. But yeah, build confidence with building campaigns, give others a platform, give others an opportunity. And I think it just wraps off really well. Ms. Menon, um, a quick answer on how the, what, uh, how does the role, institution plays a role in empowering young women? 
Yeah, I think the role is dual. Um, as an individual, you have a role to play. A lot of what I think Pooja spoke about completely resonates with me. It becomes very important to have your voice. Um, and I think for you to be confident, you need to know that you know your job really well. So of course, all of that hard work and you know everything kind of is, is always the foundational part. Um, if you have that voice and if you're able to kind of, you know, work towards opportunities focus, things will work in the right direction. Now, when, when I say have that voice, then also have the ability to have a counter opinion and not be uncomfortable sharing that. I think what institutions value the most or what will be most valuable to the institutions, let me say that, is the diverse opinion that we bring to the table. Uh, where, you know, sometimes I think specifically as PR professionals, a lot of us are the conscience keepers of the organization, right? Like there are business goals, there are legal liabilities, there are a lot of things that are playing around, but you as the communications and as somebody who's the custodian of the reputation of the company, you're the conscience keeper. You say, okay, this sounds right. Legally, there's nothing wrong. Business-wise makes a lot of sense, but look, this is how it's going to affect your reputation. Uh, so I think that confidence will come when you know what you're saying makes sense. Uh, so I think from that perspective, individually, there's a lot to work towards. I think when I look at the institutions, um, I feel like, you know, somewhere the institutions have to think about this subject as something other than a PR campaign. And I hate to say it as a PR professional, but I feel like a lot of times diversity and inclusivity, it's like you need to have that one page on your website. You need to have pictures of women smiling and feeling really good. Uh, you need to do those bring your child to work days and a lot of this is you know it feels like a PR campaign to me there are very few companies that really invest in building that culture uh, I feel glad that I currently work with a company like that which incorporates aspects of it right from the hiring phase to you know uh, through stages of onboarding and then you know the career path so I feel like if institutions are really serious about it, uh, it has to be truly inculcated in the culture. You don't need to talk about it a lot through press releases and articles and, you know, HR leaders talking about what an amazing culture of it. Um, your, your employees will talk. You know, if it's real, your employees will talk. Um, and I think things like, you know, I, I, I was reading up articles that spoke about, you know, daycare facilities and this and that. And again, like whenever these things are spoken about, it is always presented as, oh, we're doing something so special for women. I mean, the moment institutions and companies realize that it's not special, it's bare basic. Just like I have smoking rooms for men and women or smoking zones for men and women. I think once that shift comes in the mindset, um, life is going to be a lot more better. I fully agree with you, Prasadha, on that. I mean, very valid points. In fact, Gunjan Puja votes. Um, I'll actually come with a personal example here. So uh, when I joined Urban Company, almost about to complete five years, I came in at a mid-managerial level of leading the content piece for the web and all. But over the five years that I've been here, I've... Uh, I mean, the company has given me so much opportunities to be able to eventually now lead head head communications and set up new verticals for ESG and PI and other pieces. Pieces that didn't exist when I had joined, but I have built from scratch, right? That happens only when, A, the company has that kind of environment for you to be, uh, and, you know, trust that even if you fail, it's okay. We, we'll win together. And right? that uh, acceptance of uh, some... Uh, um, the risk taking risk appetite for a company as well and a lot of times these are um, not saying that women are, uh, are not willing to take this but at times we want an envi uh, environment around us to be equally positive about that risk taking piece and uh, the fact that they showed that kind of confidence and faith in me to be able to drive all of these and set them up as processes and as divisions becomes that much more important right and uh, like Prasad has said if the company is doing well employees will talk and HR people don't need to which is precisely what I'm doing right now. I, as an employee, I'm talking about it, not as a person who's driving diversity, equity, and inclusion in the company. And that those are the things that really matter. Um, what we are trying to do, or the other thing that we're doing right now at UC is also uh, driving, you know, setting up a new piece called uh, Future Women Leaders, where it will be a specific uh, program only for mentoring and coaching uh, next league of our female leaders within the company. And this will not just be external hiring, it will also be propelling forward the internal resources that we have. So I think that what matters is how we are as an institution overall coming up with not just policies on paper, but also creating an environment that puts women forward and gives them that uh, kind of 
faith and uh, you know that, that backing that even if we fail there is a safety net take as many risks as you want to go for it definitely uh, as we come to the end of our session uh, we still have 5 minutes left i would just want a concluding remark from all of the panelists about what are their messages to the young women from pr and communications professional uh, i would like to start with miss menon uh, thanks prachika i mean what an amazing session i feel so good it feels like a good saturday um i i think the question i want to leave all the young pr professionals watching especially the women is ask yourself um you know where do you want to be and how do you want to get there don't wait for mentorship programs and coaching programs like i don't know sometimes as much as i understand there's a need for it i also want to ask myself that you know we don't talk about all of this for men they do well so why is it that you know we have to be this this child who needs help or you know has to be positioned in a way like you need a lot of help you don't i have not done a lot of these programs and i i'm sure that you know we'll have a lot of other leaders probably some at the panel uh, too who have not probably gone through such programs to reach where they are maybe you know now that where we are we probably have getting some support from an executive coach or so and so and you know trying to kind of uh, hone our skills or looking at additional courses or whatever else to you know build our skills but i feel like don't bracket yourself as somebody who needs a lot of help and you know you're in this Oh, you know, there's so much going on, and how am I going to work through it? Have confidence in yourself. Um, really work on your skills. If you are good at what you do, and if you have the confidence to talk about it in a way that people around you not just recognize and appreciate you, but trust you, you will find a way forward. And I think that's where uh, the buck stops for me. Um, so, so all the lovely women you know, out there watching, uh, just. you know have the confidence like be so good that people are not able to pull you down uh, and hopefully you know uh, along the path you find uh, I, i'm being again a modest and i'm fine with it leaders like us who will always be there to support you thank you thank you miss menon miss trehan what are your uh, mess, what, what is your message to the young women professionals um after every match even nadal today Still, after so many years and decades of being that great a player, and I'm a big fan of him, still says there are challenges. That match was tough, but I managed it. So um, we are mere mortals, all of us. Not only Nadal, but all of us. And I'm sorry, I'm giving a male professional, male players example, but then uh, I want to start. I mean, this is the start to the end of breaking these shackles where we are constantly uh, living the divide of men and women professionals. Let's break that away. so if he can say that if if the great stephen curry can win the mvp after so many years and you know critics had written him off if he can get there and get on the board and at the post press conference of the event he said that i'm here people had written me off nothing stopped him he continued playing he did his best he honed his skills as prasada said keep doing that so if all of us outside have these great examples to live by learn by that one thing that i constantly believe please read a lot please write a lot personally even if that is please educate yourself i mean very rightly said there are no mentors and guides but keep going back to the classroom for whatever you would like to study uh yes meet us on the way wherever you're climbing up the ladder horizontal vertical next in the boardroom uh but start respecting anybody and everybody that you see has come to any position of uh, seniority because they've had to fight way too many battles to get where they were yeah so la- let's start respecting every individual miss mukherjee what would you like to say um i think uh, uh, you know to stand out and excel especially women in this uh, uh, you know in this business you know in this business world one of my key key takeaways from this conversation that we were having is you know we need to lead you know think yourself as a leader first you have to inspire yourself and others every day you have to lead the way and become an epitome for other women to follow and i think that's what is the most important uh, journey for us if we are confident of pulling it through uh, you know i'm happy to be you know working in an organization where we each and every you know women or 
you know each you know each man or woman in this organization in a leadership position is literally um you know behaving or you know operating like an entrepreneur themselves and i think that that speaks a lot about the confidence that you know organizations today have in women like us that we will be able to kind of lead our own teams uh you know all that you know i, I still remember when i joined the pr industry um our, you know the, the the previous companies that i have worked in a, a very important thing that used to always come is they don't understand finance they don't know what revenue sheets are gone are those days gone are those days when we don't hear those very stereotypical you know uh, i would say comments because that at that time that time at that point of time really kind of used to pull me down but today i'm much more confident i'm much more confident because there have been women leaders who have trained me mentored me to kind of believe in some things that we we will be able to achieve and i think yeah i mean just believe in yourself first i think that's the message i would love to uh, advocate thank you ms mukherjee lastly ms sharma what is your message to the professionals yeah my message is pretty simple if you are capable of writing a vision roadmap for the company communications plan or any plan for the next 2 years 5 years whatever why can't we write it for ourselves right for stopping us we should write one for ourselves if we are brand i mean helping our spokes people or our leaders to present a certain image in the uh, in the wider realm we can do that for ourselves as well i mean simplest example right we uh, we always tweeting or um, you know posting on linkedin about um, great stuff that the company is doing from the company and handle and all that how much time are we investing in our own personal social media handles i mean a lot of communications professionals have very limited uh, reach on social media itself if right? we are not investing time in our, our using our skills for our own betterment our own growth and uh, i think that's what women should start doing and use that use those skills that you're using for company for for your growth as well that would be my biggest giveaway here thank you ms sharma a, a very big thank you to all the panelists for joining here and i'm sure the women professionals who are watching have definitely gained some confidence and they would definitely imply imply uh, whatever things you shared about uh, moving on in the industry thank you so much thanks ruchika this was a fantastic panel to be a part of really indeed i feel i myself feel very lucky to be the moderator of this panel thank you so much to everybody so oh, kind ruchika but thank you thank you so much for the opportunity thank you co panelists it was just amazing let's yeah. continue chatting on thank you thank you thank everyone thank you ruchika